Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Gudi. I'm a consultant in reproductive medicine, surgery and assisted conception at the Homerton Fertility Centre in London. And today I've, I'm going to talk about a subject where I often get queries. Uh, I have many emails coming from across the world which ask me questions and I try and get back on an open forum where that discussion helps to benefit not only me by reading, but also a large number of people who would benefit by looking at what conclusion I have reached and how I have reached that conclusion, with also uh, what I would like to tell the people asking me that question. The question I get asked is, I'm doing an IUI cycle, I have five follicles or six follicles growing, I do not want to give HCG and I want to give the GnRH analog trigger, the agonist trigger, to reduce the risk of overstimulation. Can I give it? And somebody else will come and say, well, the success rates with an agonist trigger are lower and what should we do? Now let's go and look at this paper which was presented in Fertility Sterility and it looked at answering this exact question. Does the HCG trigger an agonist trigger compared to an HCG trigger in IUI cycle, does it lower success rates? The use of GNRH agonist trigger versus HCG may be one of the ways you can prevent over hyperstimulation, and there's no doubt. We know that from IVF, where you can almost get the risk of over hyperstimulation to less than 1%, and that is a significant drop in over hyperstimulation rates. The endogenous LH which comes from the analog trigger with the agonist trigger mimics nature. Mimics nature where? It mimics nature in the hormones it releases. It releases LH as a peak and a peak of FSH. Again, LH and FSH, something different from HCG. In nature, FSH is also increased with the LH rise. But we also know that if you give the analog trigger, you cause down regulation, you cause incomplete corpus luteum or inadequate corpus luteum, and you cause progesterone deficiency. And we know that again from studies that are coming in from IVF. So this was a prospective randomized control trial, which was done in Vietnam. IUI was done after natural or stimulated or stimulated cycles, HCG or, or agonist trigger was used, IOI was done 36 hours after trigger, and in all cases, luteal phase support of 200 of vaginal progesterone was given in each group. Let's have a look at the results. The results are very interesting. And when you look at the results, the AMH was similar in both groups. The HMG cycles were about 28%. Uh, of the cycles, the HMG dose was quite high when you use it. That's the total HMG dose. If you look at the clinical pregnancy rates, 10.8% in the agonist trigger, 32% in the HCG trigger. Okay, and what does it tell you? That an agonist trigger on its own will give you a lower pregnancy rate. And this is what you realize over the past three to five years is that the analog trigger gives you an interrupted luteal phase. The peak and the entire length of the LH activity is half that of nature. So when you give the agonist trigger, the LH rise that occurs is 24 hours. When you give it in, in nature, the LH rise is 48 hours, completely different. Half of what nature does is what the analog trigger does. And that, in fact, disrupts the entire luteal phase. And we know that unless there is HCG, the luteal phase finds it impossible to recover and pregnancy rates are significantly lower. So the question now comes up is, if you have six follicles in IUI, what would you do? Safety comes first. The risk of having multiple pregnancies is high and one option may be to abandon the cycle. The second 
is to try and see how you can support the luteal phase, but that evidence comes from IVF mainly. And again, if you have a look at answering the question, I would say analog trigger in an IUI cycle significantly decreases the chances of pregnancy compared to an HCG trigger. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this short talk. Thank you.